Welcome to Thinking Beer. I'm Max Baker, Master Cicerone. I'm Ryan Daly, Master Cicerone. Today on Thinking Beer, we're going to be talking about one of the most popular beer styles in America and the world, IPA. So the original story is that IPAs were brewed for shipment to the country of India. This is back in the late 1700s. But in fact, a lot of different types of beers were successfully brewed and shipped to India at this time. It wasn't until decades later that this type of beer became popular within England and they started to dub it India Pale Ale. Now we fast forward to present day and when we think of IPA in America, we're really kind of reinventing and rethinking what this style originally was, showcasing all the great things that American hops have to offer. Whether it's hazy, West Coast, American, or English, they all share one thing in common, and that's hops. Hops give the bitterness and intense aroma and flavor to beer. So today we have somebody coming to us live from hop country. From 10 Barrel Brewing, we have on Jimmy Seifert, brewmaster extraordinaire, and all around great guy. How are you doing today, Jimmy? Uh, I am so fantastic in sunny Ben, Oregon. You've brewed with hops, you live in hop country. When you think about IPAs, what comes to mind for you? For me, the IPA is big and dynamic, right? It delivers the, the punch in the glass. You know, you never get bored, right? It, it's, like, it's like going uh, record shopping. You're always a new record to buy. So what is it like kind of living in hop country and trying to compete and brew IPAs? We have a unique advantage. One is to have the, the feel the heartbeat of what's going on with the hop community and what's new and cool, which is really a big driver these days. And then the other part too is being able to build a relationship with these farmers, right? These are the heroes for us for the industry and whatnot and being able to tap into what their love is. And you know, for me, I'm like a commodity trader. I want to get the best hops. It's probably a tough question because with a lot of new hop varieties coming out, uh, playing around with different hop blends, you want to continue to explore. But if you could only brew with one hop for the rest of your life, what, what would it be? Probably gonna go Comet. And I like the Common Hop. I think the Common Hop drives that super bitter orange. I think it drives, we can, what you call, bottle transform it and make it into tangerine. It's got super great aromatics. It's super cool. And nobody else is using it. So it's all mine anyway. So that's why I love it. That's a great one. When we think of IPAs and what style of IPA you like, it's really about finding where your dials need to be adjusted, where your aroma dial is, where your bitterness dial is, where your flavor dial is, and even how you like that beer to finish. Dry, creamy, lingering bitterness, lingering sweetness. Most people are familiar with American IPAs, specifically West Coast style IPAs, but there's a whole new category of IPAs that are super hot, uh, and that's hazy IPAs. So uh, did you bring any hazies for us today, Jimmy, to talk about? You know, luckily, I did. <laughs> uh... Nice, and I'm noticing right off the bat that uh, it's not just a clever name, but I can barely see through the clarity of that beer. So. What makes a hazy IPA uh, unique and special? There actually is a lot of science behind these beers, right? And I think the science is what makes these beers super exciting, especially for me, right? It's something new, something intriguing, whole new flavors. What I can do with hops now with the, using the techniques we're using in this beer are huge, right? Probably the biggest thing that goes on is dry hopping during fermentation. You know, blew my mind. Like, there's no way we're gonna dry hop during fermentation. For people who don't understand out there, there's a lot of CO2 in there. So imagine like your old man drops salt in their beer, which my old man used to do, and then salt the beer would just foam over. Obviously the beers react, they foam over because the nucleating CO2 and they're blowing out of the tanks. But what happens is during these fermentations, yada yada, is like these wild transformation happens and create these wonderful tropical mango, guava, what you call it, notes, star fruit, because that just makes me sound really smart, you know, and then also these <laughs> wonderful tangerine citrus notes, beautiful sweet, that are just mind blowing, because now you have this sweet hop flavor contrasting against these bitterness hop flavors. So then what happens is like in cooking, everything just explodes in flavor. Max, what are you drinking? From a brewery you might've heard of, 10 Barrel. Uh, it's called Joe IPA. This is a beer that was made by uh, Sean Kelso. 10 barrel brewmaster out of Boise. In the West Coast style, it's got a nice bit of grapefruit. Um, there's some berries in there. It's got a nice bitterness. Um, and as you can see, uh, the clarity, you know, almost all IPAs are somewhat hazy from, from the hops. Jimmy's beer is on the stronger side of haze because there's more uh, malt and there's more ingredients in there that are contributing to that haze, but pretty tasty beer overall. I apologize. I had your shirt, Jimmy, but I couldn't track down any 10 barrel in uh, Buffalo. So I got a little, 
Elysian Contact Haze. Nice. Another hazy from our friends up in up in Seattle. So you can see probably a little bit lighter than what you're drinking there, Max, but kind of this nice light gold, almost orange hue. To me, definitely a lot of berry, a lot of raspberry, a little bit of passion fruit, a little bit of that guava, really light body, clean bitterness. I mean, definitely goes down pretty, pretty solid, pretty smooth. You have a lot of great brewers within 10 barrel. How do you figure out like, what is the one that we're gonna actually scale up and take to market? What we try to do is really hone in on those people who are hammering it, right? So we obviously went to the New England area a couple years ago for the hazies. We went down to San Francisco area, spent some time down with there. When we're all together and talking, ideas flow and things kind of build up top of each other. But the other part too is get inspired. And then really hone in on certain beers that we love and then get to know everything about it. Jimmy, what's one good takeaway you can stress to anyone who's drinking a beer, especially an IPA? Yeah, drink fresh, right? The fresher, the better for us. You know, once again, we build these beers to be dynamic out of the bottle. And they're just going to be the best when they're first out, when they first come on to the, uh, the shelves. Come back next week. We're going to be talking about lagers. Thanks, Jimmy, for joining us. We could probably go on for days talking about IPAs. But until next time, cheers, buddy. Thanks, hey, Jimmy. Good to see you. Time to go. I'm running out of beer. Peace cheers. out, guys. Love you all. Be safe.